My father worked on the railway line. Uh, we travelled around small country towns. One of those country towns I had an experience where I was first, I first started to encounter racism. And uh, it started a journey of anxieties and a journey of how do I change this. My little story was to tell you that I was on the reserve in Williams, a little town in the southwest, and uh, I was playing a form of baseball with the kids. I was only 10 years old, and I was uh, standing in the, in the reserve and I saw this cop car come flying up. The two policemen that walked in onto the reserve after they got off of the, out of the car uh, were walking to a particular house and said, Mervyn, we have a warrant for your arrest. The house all of a sudden became the focus of everybody. And uh, to cut it a bit sh short, there were a couple of kangaroo dogs who had bailed up the policemen. Uh, in, in those days, we'd used dogs to hunt because we'd, uh, we'd moved on from spears, so we'd moved and we'd snare the kangaroos and we'd use the kangaroo dogs to hunt. The kangaroo dogs were very protective of their masters. So these two policemen had, uh, had uh, been bailed up by these two dogs. All the kids who were playing rounders stopped playing rounders. We were watching this. It was like a movie. And uh, Mervyn, I have a warrant for your arrest. There was no movement in the house. Usually the curtain would flicker a little bit and you'd see someone look out. So we were waiting for the curtain to flicker. And uh, all of a sudden the curtain did flicker. And Auntie Muriel looked out the, out the window and the policeman said, Mervyn, I have a warrant for your arrest. And Uncle Mervyn wouldn't come out. And the two dogs were still snarling at the policeman and the policeman couldn't go in the yard because the dogs were uh, protecting Mervyn, Uncle Mervyn. So one of the policemen, the sergeant, grabbed out his gun, and in front of all the children, in front of everybody, shot the dog. That was my first encounter with what I call over-policing. I'm a Wachak Nyunga. I'm uh, from Perth. I have a uh, particular interest in looking after my land. I also have a particular interest in sharing um, the load with other Aboriginal people around Australia. We do have common, common uh, issues that we have to deal with. I'm, uh, I'm related to all of the people that uh, come from the Durbel Yerrigan, which is the Swan River, and we call Perth, Perth today, but it's really uh, our word for our Perth is the Durbel Yerrigan. Uh, Budja means land. Okay, so we have a very, and we, we heard the, the, the young fellow the other day saying to us that uh, we have an affinity with the land which is quite profound. You better believe it. We Aboriginal Australians have an affinity with the land that is profound. We believe that our children are born from the land. We know that we're equals. We're born equal. When we're born, there's no racism, there's no discrimination. The babies are equal. Something happens on the pathway to being an 18-year-old that diminishes the equality. Our people are the ultimate binge drinkers. But uh, more Aboriginal Australians abstain from drinking alcohol in, in, in a per capita ratio than uh, the mainstream. And that, on, that is only because we're too, too unwell to continue to drink. When you get to about 40 and your kidneys and your liver have started to fail and you've, you've got respiratory disease or, or tract, um, you've really gone past the point of being able to, to sit down with your mates and, and have a good little binge. Indigenous Australians make up almost one quarter of Australia's prison population. In the past 20 years, Indigenous Australians have continued to fill our country's prisons at alarming, alarmingly disproportionate rates. The strong links between substance misuse and Indigenous incarceration highlight an urgent need for government to address this disturbing problem. It's not something that's just come out in the last decade. This is something that's come out and a lot of correlations have now been made with what happened in 1967 when Aboriginal people were given what we call our citizenship rights. From that day, we've noted 
that the alcohol and the, the misuse of substances, but mainly alcohol, has been on the increase. But Indigenous Australians are 13 times more likely to be imprisoned. In Western Australia, it's over 20. In Western Australia, uh, over 50 per cent of the juveniles in, in throughout Australia, over 50 per cent of the juveniles in incarceration in Australia are black Aboriginal Australians. 31 per cent of all adult female prisoners in 2007 were Indigenous. We're only 3 per cent of the population, everybody. 3% of the population. Look at these stats. According to reports by the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission's Joint Standing Committee on Mental Health and Human Rights, people with mental illness are consigned to incarceration rather than treatment because of the lack of appropriate mental health and associated services. In one Australian jurisdiction, approximately 60% females and 50% males with a substance use disorder also had a mental health disorder. Male prisoners are at increased risk of suicide and death from overdose in the period immediately following their release. We know that the comorbidity and the correlation between health, mental health and uh, substance misuse is also starting to be uh, a profound issue for Aboriginal Australians. <laughs> when our uh, boys and uh, girls get caught, and uh, it's a little bit of cannabis or it might be uh, alcohol, it's, it's probably the third or fourth time. So they don't, they don't qualify for the diversions because the diversions are for those, the novices that um, are getting caught the first time. What we need to do is think about what happens to people who are getting caught for the third and fourth and fifth time. Are, are there, is there the potential for us to divert rather than lock up, okay? Because some of these people aren't real criminals. They've just got caught up in a system and a pathway which has got them into trouble. The connection between being locked up and the misuse of alcohol and drugs in the Aboriginal context is just so real and blatant that we Australians have to do something about it. We have to turn the system around. Because what they're doing is they're still building jails. They're going to build another two jails in Western Australia. They're going to build another one up in the Northern Territory. And it seems to me that we've been overtaken by this capitalist hunger to keep building jails because it's an industry. Prisoner health is an important priority and NIDAC is keen to see young Indigenous men and women diverted from a life of substance misuse and crime. Since health, substance misuse and wellbeing issues are closely linked to Indigenous violence, offending and incarceration, Interventions that address alcohol and other drug misuse have the potential to significantly reduce the overrepresentation of Indigenous Australians in our correction system. So we're wanting to turn, turn everything upside down. There are people, colleagues of mine, who, said that, who say the justice system in Australia doesn't work. It doesn't work for Aboriginal Australians. That's for sure and certain. <laughs> We need to develop plans right across Australia. It's not that we can do it by saying we need to stop building jails. It's not that we can do it by saying we need better education systems. It's not that we can do it by saying we need more employment. The whole gamut of being an Australian comes to the fore. If we turn the system upside down and if we stopped just locking people up and we said to young men and women, who were, who, who are under pressure or under, under the anxieties of, of trying to find what is their niche when they're 18, may just need that little bit of extra help and the little bit of counselling or, or the little bit of rehab that goes with it, okay? If we can start to do that and think about how we get in there before people get to jail, it's certainly going to uh, add to the quality of life of all Australians. Let's get rid of the mentality that says Aboriginal people are lazy, dirty, criminals, and let's, let's, let's start thinking positively that they are citizens of Australia and that they too deserve to have a quality of life which we all enjoy. We are one of the most affluent countries on the planet and yet we have this marginalised, disadvantaged group called Aboriginal Australians who don't enjoy such.